Hello, this is Michael Pirelli from Constep, and welcome to 10 to 5, where we'll learn about a specific topic, complete with five new ideas in 10 minutes or less. This installment of 10 to 5 is on TWI and why it's back. Today's presenter is Tom Southworth, a lean consultant from Constep. Tom, the floor is yours. You can now take it away. TWI, or Training Within Industry. Why was it important then? Why is it important now? Well, back during the Second World War, we had a national emergency, obviously. And we had many people who were drafted into the military, so that took our skilled workforce out of the workforce. The result was a critical lack of experience with those who were coming in. Now, we had 17.2% unemployment in 1939, or roughly at the start of the Second World War. Most of those folks were drafted, and those who had come in were primarily minorities and women who had never been in the workforce before. And by 1944, everyone who could be employed was employed. So TWI was critically important to the war then. Why is it important now? Well, we have yet another national emergency, the severe recession. We have manufacturing that is being outsourced and offshored. We have a service-driven economy that no longer has an emphasis on developing manufacturing skills, and the result, once again, is a critical lack of experience with our remaining and aging workforce. Because the average manufacturing worker is about 55 years old, and no one is coming behind him or her to replace them. So, everyone agrees there is this skills gap that exists now, and as this aging workforce retires, it will only get worse. So what can we do about it? Now, Deloitte and the Manufacturing Institute have done studies over several years, and these have been consistent for many, many years. And these are from businesses that say that skilled production workers is the most negative impact on their business, meaning that a lack of skilled production workforce is going to have the biggest impact to them. And again, these studies have been consistent for several years. This, isn't not, this is not new. Skilled production, then, is by far the most serious issue impacting business, and service skills are not, so we certainly don't need more of these jobs. And in these deficiencies, what are we lacking? Well, we're lacking basic problem-solving skills. More than half the respondents chose this. Why don't people have basic problem-solving skills? Well, it's because we don't teach them anymore. We're training our workforce, really, to service problems, but not to solve them. TWI, or training within industry at its core, is a problem-solving method which follows the Plan, Do, Check, Act problem-solving model. TWI helps develop these problem-solving skills through the application of job instruction, job methods, and job relations. Now, why are people leaving jobs? Why teach problem-solving? Well, because people are frustrated and they're leaving. When they leave, their experience leaves with them, and we've already established that our system has not been preparing enough workers to take their place. Employees are frustrated, but it's not because of money. Fewer than 25% of the workforce who were surveyed said that money was their motivating factor in leaving the workforce, and this is a study that's been done by Gallup over the years. More than 70% of those polled chose a reason that was either under the control of or influenced by their direct supervisor. It's supervision, supervisors, who are frustrating the workforce because we're not teaching these supervisors how to supervise anymore, how to solve problems that are frustrating their employees. These employees then are becoming disengaged because they feel that no one is out there helping them. Now these employees basically, Gallup said, fall into three categories. The engaged, the not engaged, and the actively disengaged. The engaged employees are those who have this passion and they really dive into their work. The not engaged folks are the ones who are just basically sleepwalking through the day. And the actively disengaged, they're just unhappy, period. So a question for everyone. What percentage of your employees do you think are actively engaged versus just going through the day? What percentage do you think are actively dis disengaged? And it's probably a lot more than you think. Now, further in this study, 86% of those who said they were engaged said they were very happy at work. Only 48% of those who were sleepwalking through the day said they were happy, probably because nobody was bothering them. And surprisingly, 11% said they were uh, of the actively disengaged said they were very happy. Why they were very happy? Who knows? They're probably very happy being actively disengaged and being miserable. But the fact remains that if your employees are actively disengaged, they're unhappy. They're unhappy they're going to leave. If they leave, their experience leaves with them. And why do they leave? They leave managers, not companies. This quote was from Marcus Buckingham and Kurt Kaufman, authors of the book First Break All the Rules, What the World's Greatest Managers Do Differently. 
and they discovered this by asking five questions to these employees that are telling us the supervisors are the number one influence. First question is, do I know what's expected of me at work? Second question, do I have the materials and equipment to do my work right? Do I have the opportunity to do what I do best every day? Does my supervisor or someone at work seem to care about me as a person? And last, at work, do my opinions seem to count? And they found that negative answers to these questions are what's influencing employees to leave those companies. So if people leave managers, not companies, then are your employees engaged and productive or are they just satisfied in getting through their day? Are they sleepwalking? Or are they disengaged? Are you and your managers driving good people, engaged and productive people away? Well, we have to stop that because you just simply can't afford to have unhappy, poorly trained, disengaged workers in today's economy. Where does TWI fit into this? Well, with job instruction, you have to ask yourself, do people really know what's expected of them at work and do they know how to do their best every day? Do they know the answers to those questions? Job instruction teaches a person how to do any job correctly, safely, and conscientiously. And by learning not only what to do and how to do it, but also why an employee should perform the task the way you need them to perform it, which is the safest and easiest best way, you're engaging them in their work. But are you just telling your employees what to do or are you teaching them what to do, how to do it, and why to do it? So job instruction teaches the individual how to engage the employee in their work. Now, when it comes to solving problems, do you just tell your employees to solve them or do you teach them how? Job methods is the way that people know what materials and equipment are needed to do their work right. But even if they know what's needed to do their work right, do they have the opportunity to give their opinion on the best use of these resources? Job instruction teaches people how to do a task. Job methods teaches people how to break down any task and develop new ways to make the best use of existing materials, equipment, and staffing for better output and higher quality. Job methods involves the individual and involves their opinions. And lastly, and this is usually the biggest problem, supervisors and other employees don't know how to deal with conflict. They try to avoid it. And we tell people to supervise effectively and fairly, but do they know how? In job relations, supervisors typically or usually avoid personnel problems again because we don't like conflict. It's the old fight or flight reaction. We'd rather flee the situation than deal with it. Job relations teaches people how to deal with personnel issues that are frustrating not only that individual employee but also the supervisors and others. And to do so in a way that's both fair and effective and gets the problem resolved. So job instruction, job methods, and job relations are all problem-solving tools, teaching supervisors and others how to teach, teaching supervisors and others how to deal with individuals, teaching supervisors and others how to make the best use of everyone's equipment, time, and materials to do the jobs correctly, safely, and conscientiously. Thanks, Tom. We hope you enjoyed this 10 to 5. Please don't forget to download the checklist for this program. Each checklist contains five new ideas regarding the presented topic. You can also view this and other 10 to 5s anytime by visiting www.constep.org. Be sure to check back regularly as new 10 to 5s are added often. Thanks again to everyone for watching and we hope you have a great rest of your day.